So uh, this will be a, a talk on uh, on Libratback. Um, Libratback is uh, for supporting gaming mice, like uh, like one I have here. It's uh, it, the gaming mice today are uh, quite advanced, actually, where you you can you can push settings directly onto the device. It has onboard uh, memory, where you can. Uh, you can configure like the LEDs, the, the colors, the patterns. You can set uh, different mappings. You can put macros on there. And then once you take the mice uh, to another computer, you still have the same settings on it. Uh, gamers typically have it also where you have different profiles on the mice so that you can, you can quickly switch between specific uh, uh, sensitivities for, for, uh, for different parts of the game. So that's the profiles, and in them there's a resolution, plot maps, and there it is. So the problem with uh, these gaming mice is that the software to configure them is uh, mostly only uh, released for Windows. So we don't have uh, much uh, official support. And every vendor has their own protocol that they talk to the mice with, and typically also different pro protocol versions, depending on which uh, which device they use. So, Libratback was created by Peter Hüderer and uh, Benjamin Tissouin. Um, it it meant to, to, to unify the support for, for all of these mice because there were a lot of uh, projects scattered around uh, delivering support only for certain uh, models and, and, uh, and brands. So, to, to create one, uh, unified interface to kind of look at all the mice and say, okay, what's, what's the, the common features that we want to support? Not everything is supported on all models. Um, and then to deliver that in a way that you can integrate nicely into, uh, into your desktop environments. So there's already been a few talks on, the, on Libratback, um, one at XTC and one in uh, Guadec that ended with uh, a note saying we need help with reverse engineering all the mice. And so that's uh, going to be the focus of this talk on how to, to do that so that, that people can help, uh, hopefully uh, help. So the basic architecture that's uh, used for uh, in, in LibRedBack is that you have user interfaces uh, uh, that the user will use. It could be Piper which uh, is this one. Um, the user interface talks to the Ratback daemon, which is uh, running. You communicate with the dbus. It uses the libratback to, uh, to have the, uh, the overall uh, functionality. And then for each um, mouse or, or brand of mice, you have different driver backends. And these are the ones we will be implementing, or well, we need to implement. Um, the first thing that uh, Libratback will do is that when, when you start it up, it will uh, start by discovering which of the uh, connected devices can, can it uh, operate with. It will do this on, uh, first by matching the vendor and uh, product ID uh, on the USB. Um, and then it will, uh, it will probe the device, try to, to just make sure that everything is in complete order, that it has the this, uh, expected uh, features. Then it will internally say, OK, which uh, capabilities does this mouse have? Does it have LEDs? Can I switch profiles? Can I map buttons? Things like that. And then it loads the full uh, onboard configuration that's stored on the mouse, if possible. Then the user will, through the, through the interface, uh, the graphical interface will also sum of the state that Libratback now has loaded into its own memory. And when you're done, you uh, say you want to push it to the device, and then it writes uh, everything uh, to the device for you. So you have this middle thing in Libratback where you store like a, a, a buffer of the, of the changes. Coming back to... Uh, so how we do the matching, the first step you'll do if you want to, to, uh, to support a new mouse 
is to uh, run LSUSB or similar to get the, the, the uh, vendor and product IDs. You put that into the device match. You give it a, a name. It will just be for, for, uh, for showing in, in, the, in the UI. And then you specify which driver you want to use. In this example I took here, it's a SteelSeries driver. And you also have an SVG, which will be like a, a, a view of the, the, of the mouse that we'll be looking into a bit later. And you can also put extended information in there if you cannot query it on the, on the device itself. So the, the basic data structure within LibRadBag is that you will have a device. On the device, you have multiple uh, profiles, at least one in that you can have different resolutions which are that you can switch between uh, where you say one has a DPI of 800 and the other one 2000 or whatever you need and you have your button mappings and your LED settings. The capabilities that you will want to put on the mouse are defined uh, uh, as uh, uh, within the within the bread pack with some Definitions. You can see there are many of them, but these are the things that you will kind of uh, when you when you when you buy the mouse or or you have it, you can you can you can see from the device pretty much. Okay, does it have LEDs? Can I can I switch uh, the between the profiles and things like that? So these are the things that you would you would uh, you would start by adding onto the device, and so that's what you could peer out of just by looking at the mouse. Then you will need to start uh, reverse engineering the protocol that it talks to uh, to the device with. So since we only have the vendor software from, uh, from for Windows, we will need to, to install that in a virtual machine. You will install their configuration software, then redirect the, the device that you plugged in uh, to, to the virtual machine and then use Wireshark to, uh, to listen on, on the packets. Um, and it's a good idea to, to, to set Wireshark to decode things as USB a hit. So then you basically just start by opening the configuration software, setting something like changing, the, changing a button mapping, changing it back again perhaps, and then looking into the, into the packets to try and, and, and figure out what every uh, byte in there uh, uh, means. So that's that's the, the next step to, to then have a good, good uh, um, overview of what, what all the things that they communicate with, what they mean. Um, it's worth noting that some of the data will uh, sometimes change. Uh, sometimes they put checksums in there so that you, uh, to, to verify that it's not random data that they're getting. So look out for that. And also consider the Indianess, uh, typically uh, big Indian. So that's a big, quick demo. Um, for the VM, I prefer to use uh, GNOME boxes. It's, uh, it has a, a feature where, uh, oops, didn't mean to that. Nope. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Here we go. Um, normally, boxes will not allow you to redirect the, the, the mouse that you have connected because then you will not be able to, to control it outside anymore, but in this case, we want. So specify that, and it will, will allow you to do it. Start that up. Uh, Live demos are always a good idea. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, we'll try to. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So maybe this will not work. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um, okay. So. I would have started Wireshark as well, but just 
So say here, I, I know now, or I did know from running LSUSB that this is on the USB bus 3 for my computer, so I could go in here. Hopefully the, the boxes is coming up behind. Uh, so go for that. Oops. Um, and I can't see the top. No? Okay. So I can't click on the toolbar in the top where I would start the capture, but okay, um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, but you would go into that loop, poking at it all the time, looking, okay, um, I was going to change the, the LED colors on this one to, to, to kind of show, okay, now I change it from blue. We can see which parts of the, of the message it sends uh, that, that we set to this uh, value that we know. Um, so I suppose this is not going to be working. No. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So well, once you have done that, <laughs> uh, then then now you know which uh, which uh, messages you will want to 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 send. You 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 know the length of the uh, of the stream that you'll send or the the packet and uh, where each individual parts go. So you want to create a new driver. And within the source folder, there are already multiple uh, drivers in there. So you just, uh, maybe you just copy one of them. Then you want to register it. You, it's, it's, there's just a, a structure you put them into uh, to, uh, to, to have LibretBack consider that one. And then you put in the device file that we saw earlier. So the driver that you will write will, uh, will have three uh, function pointers where you need to make to give it an implementation one for the probing this is uh, what uh, what libratback will call into you when it when it checks to see if the device uh, uh, that you were matched on is actually correct you can you can make some basic checks for it by just either sending it a message or checking if it has the correct report uh, descriptors and then you pull the full, uh, full put pull the full configuration into into the structures then there's the commit. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. I was just sorry. The commit, where you push everything back. You basically, just loop over the profiles, loop over the over the resolutions, write all the messages you need. Each of the parts in the in the data structure, you typically have a, a dirty field. That you can say, okay, did the user actually change this? Can we skip sending this specific packet? And the one for set active profile. Some mice will allow you to change the profile from uh, from the client. So if you're working with Piper, if you change the the, the profile in the dropdown, then it can uh, can uh, move it as well. And the remove uh, function is just to free any any memory you allocated. Um, LibRatback has uh, some some helper functions that are worth uh, taking into consideration. Especially for the engineness, if you have uh, some some fields will be uh, 16 uh, 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 bit, um, and then you'll want to use the, the helper functions to, to to do the conversions for you. There's also tables for the for the hit keys, so that you don't have to to do all that uh, uh, lookups yourself. So take a look out for those if you are going to write one. So. There is also uh, this, uh, this nice uh, Piper uh, UI uh, that uh, Jente Hitzkes, if I managed to pronounce that correctly, he worked on it as part of the Sum of Code this summer. Turned out to be a really nice uh, interface, I think. It communicates with the Libratback, uh, Libratback daemon, and um, you, you, you use it, uh, it's very general uh, in it, and then you, you supply it with the SVG, and then it knows how to set up the, the interface based on the SVG. Um, the SVGs are supplied by uh, LibRatback, so any, any client that you write will be able to, to use them. Uh, they supply a, a basic layout of, the, of them, them, how the mouse looks, where are the buttons, where are the LEDs, then it has some leader lines going out to the side saying, okay, out here, if it says button one, then there's a line going in, and you can place a, a button out there to configure it. Um, once you do SVG, you want to use some light colors to fit into the theme, 
And there are some a, a, a full list of, of rules about how, how specifically the SVT should, should be. Um, you must have uh, three specific layers, one called the device, uh, and where you basically draw everything from the mouse. And then you have two extra layers for buttons and LEDs where you have these leader lines going out to the sides. I'll show an a example in, in a few seconds. Um, the easiest way to, 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 to do this with these is basically to just take a picture of the mouse from above, put it into the, to the lowest layer of the, of the SVG, put another one on top, make that semi-transparent, and then start drawing on top of that so you, you get the, the right shapes. And then you name, uh, where if you draw a button, then you name it button zero, that's the left click button, and button two for right, etc. cetera, and, and also for the LEDs. And that is what uh, what uh, Piper will use to to figure out what to to change. Um, and yeah, you have you put a small square at, at the sides, like it's just a tiny seven by seven uh, uh, square. That's again the indicator of where to put the the uh, 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 Piper's own buttons. And uh, and you also give it an extra information of whether the, 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 you, the whether Piper should place the button for configuration on the left or right side of it. So another attempt at a demo. <coughs> and again, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm trying to hit the, the menu so I can move it myself. But. Maybe any of the mirror boot? I'm sorry? Maybe any of the mirror boot? Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so I'm just opening a mouse here, one that I drew recently, and you can you can see those are the leader lines. Click on a button here. That's button zero. So you just you just basically give it, give it uh, those IDs, and uh, and then it will. Um, it will uh, it will use that to to to, to set up the, the whole UI. Um, so, I think uh, I think uh, if we should have any questions, it should be now. Otherwise, I would have gone to the demo of of Piper as well. Yeah. Are there any uh, mouse manufacturers that are playing nice with the Linux code community, like opening new protocols? And um, yeah, okay, so the question is uh, if there is any vendors who are playing nice with the community. Uh, Logitech uh, certainly are, uh, and G-Skill as well. Um, but uh, otherwise, you mostly just uh, get ignored. Uh, but so, so that's also why, that, I mean, that there are so many things, uh, so many devices out there. We, we need help to, to, to people who have access to the devices to, to go in and, and start doing the reverse engineering and uh, the, the hope for this talk was to, to give some hints about how to get going and, and, and hopefully if you want to, to try out then, then give it a go and, and get in contact if you want uh, uh, if you need help for, for anything yeah uh, is there any possibility a misconfiguration might break the device it's, uh, the question is if there is uh, a risk in, in doing it if you risk you're breaking the device and uh, yes uh, that's always a risk. <laughs> I think I have, I have seven or eight devices, and I've put them through all kinds of things, and, and then they haven't broken yet. But uh, I mean, it, do this on your own risk, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. What about keyboards? Because some gaming keyboards also have uh, a slight configuration. Yeah. 
so the question is, what about keyboards? Um, and, and they s have similar, similar configurations. That is true. But uh, in trying to, 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 to come up with a, a, an API that is uh, somewhat consistent and, and, and it decided to just go for, for mice, they have a pretty, pretty common uh, set of features. And so, but, but yeah, most of the protocol can actually be the same. So how did I get involved in the project? Um, I saw a blog post about it, and I had a mouse, and then I started poking <laughs> at it, and suddenly I bought a lot of uh, mice. <laughs> Basically just checking if there's any cheap used one for sale, and then, yeah, that's how support comes. Yeah. If we're building a mouse or similar input device, how do we make your life easier? It, okay, so the question is, if, if you were building it, how you would make it easier? Yeah. Uh, supply documentation of the protocol, <laughs> that's <laughs> basically all we need. Or and a device to test on. Yeah. Is there time for more questions? One minute. One minute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, suppose you were interested in testing mice. Uh, could the project use more Illustrator to draw these images for Python? Yeah. Sure. Sure. And and draw. Uh, the question was uh, if if we could have help uh, from people who just wanted to draw the images. And certainly yes, because that actually takes quite some time to to get right. Okay, that's uh, all the time there is. Thanks.